welcome. My name is Melody, and today is the 28th episode of the Melody Crochet Podcast. It is the first day of summer, 2018, and I am so excited. So I'm celebrating with lots of yellow, lots of orange, got myself some flowers, and I am going to share my knitting and crochet projects with you today. So grab yourself something to drink. I'm having mango tea, but don't worry, there's no caffeine, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to sleep just fine tonight. In addition to that, what do we get going on? Oh, we're just going to make some dessert, enjoy, and celebrate the beginning of summer because it was a very cold winter and spring didn't feel very different than winter. So, hot weather, good times, I'm completely ready. Let's get into the podcast though. I'm, I, whew, I had a little tutorial that came out about a week ago for my cocoon. So this is my first vintage object. This is my Hungry Caterpillar Cocoon. I made a little tutorial. I created this pattern 2012, and it has been, it's actually been on YouTube before. Somebody else, um, Fuad, I forget her name. Fuad, I think, used my pattern and made a tutorial, and she linked it back to my blog, which was weird. I didn't know that happened until a couple days ago when I went to post mine. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's actually linked to my, it was so strange, but totally cool. A lot of people got to use it and that was the entire point of it. That's why you put a free pattern out there, but I was doing mine and I think I did a little bit better because a lot of people were asking some questions and weren't getting answers on it. And I was really uncomfortable about that. If I had known it was up there, I would have answered those questions myself, but they were mostly based on little antennas. So I think I was pretty clear about it wish me luck. But if they have questions, I'm always there to answer them. So I'm not going to worry about that at all. So this was made from Red Heart Super Saver, which is a worsted weight acrylic yarn. I made this for my friend's baby years ago and popped the, popped the free pattern up on my blog, melodycrochet.com. And I went ahead and remade it. I'm remaking all of my stuff right now because everything needs new pictures. Photo quality, photo quality at least for me, has come a long way and the last six years. A long way. <laughs> I have some items on Etsy where you can actually see a dirty clothes basket in the background. I'm like, what was I doing? What was I doing? We didn't know better. It was all so amateur. It was awesome. I think it makes it all the more awesome. But nowadays you do want something that looks a little cleaner. So I am popping up some new pictures, but for that I need new items because a lot of times most of the things I made, I went ahead and gifted. I do have a tote full of stuff that I've made over the years. If you're interested, I would love to share my tote with you. It's not exactly a tote of stuff because it is an overflowing mountain of a tote, but I would love to go through it with you guys for a little while if you guys want to sit through that with me. <laughs> it's like a memory book, except it's a tote full of yarn. As it were, she's too cute. It's for a newborn size. The tutorial's up there. I'll link it down below. It was really fast, really easy, and I just love its little face. So if you're interested, Hungry Caterpillar, boy or girl, it's really suitable. It's just super cute. Gift it to somebody. Keep it yourself along with a copy of the book. So cute. <laughs> so that is my first finished object, and that tutorial was right along with it. That was a little bit of work. Now, while I was finishing that up, I had to have something to kind of go back and forth between. So while I was editing this, that, and the other, I finished my Holy Smokes. Hello, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I'm so proud of it. It was so much work. It was on a G hook on fingering white yarn. The only reason it took me months and months is because I would not decide on yarn because it just had to be perfect. I'm not usually a perfectionist at all and I'm glad because apparently it makes me very slow and pokey. So this right here, this dark blue is, and it's what's funny is they're all very different yarn bases, if that means anything to you. Um, normally the reason I would have just put these together, been happy as a clam and called it a day. I've had all of these in my stash for quite a while, but I kept arguing with myself, no, the yarn bases are too different. I couldn't bite it in the end though. So I just went with it and I'm really glad I did. I think it sits just fine. They are different, but it's okay. So the first one is Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light in Fathom, which is a really pretty blue and darker blue variegated yarn. 
The second one, so that is, how much do I have left? I set them down here. Ah, here we go. Here's my fathom. So there's my first color. My second color is Hedgehog Fibers Sock. Not twist sock, but regular sock in Medusa, which has that green and turquoise and that dark blue. So I just thought it was a perfect fade in from that. And then my third one is very special to me. This is Bala Hoya. I want to say Emerald Isles. <clears throat> I wrote it down. We have notes. Too many finished objects not to right now. Oh, Brazilian Emerald is what that's called. There's just a few. You can hardly tell on my ball. Other balls have a lot more splashes, but there are some splashes of some emerald green in there. It's really, really pretty all together. So those are my yarns. You can see how different they are. This is a single ply. This is a really thin twist, and this is a really bulky twist. So if you are a nitpick shopper, this is kind of like Preciosa. This is a lot like Stroll, and this is a lot like Hawthorne. We're talking all sock weight, fingering weight, whichever you like to call it, and so different, which is cool. Nice to see them all in one place in case I'm looking to compare the body of them all and how they work together, <laughs> but I really fought it. I fought it left and right, but this the shawl pattern is lovely. She's making a more shallow V, which is cool, but I do like to cover my tush when I'm wearing a shawl sometimes, so that's cool too. If I do one of the new ones, I have not seen for a little bit. I have a little issue. The husband got hurt. I was talking to you guys about that last time. And honestly, I'm so behind on podcasts. It breaks my heart. I'm like, I'm missing out. But I have been doing lots of therapy with crochet. So as you'll see, I finished a lot of stuff. In addition to the husband, who is doing a lot better. Thank you to everybody for all your good vibes and blessings and hugs. But my son, the older one, had the audacity to turn 21 last week. 21. What? Huh, more tea. But no, I'm very proud of him. We had a good time. I ate a lot of food. I did a lot of crocheting and a little knitting and some shopping. So that is my Holy Smokes by, by Rosina at Zines and Roger. And I'm very, very pleased with it. It's actually, you wouldn't think so, but it's actually kind of warm. I mean, I see the holes, I know, but it really does hold in some heat. It's nice. I'm going to take it off because this is yellow day. Orange and yellow. And my next finished object, oh, not that one. We're going to bring out the tank top. Now, everybody's making tank tops right now because it is the summer, summer top cal with Faye over at the crochet circle and in addition to that I double dipped this and it was over at Hannah at the Cozy Cottage Crochet her selfish cow so here is my tank top is it inside out no nope, I don't think so my tie just fell inside so this is my tank top Ooh, it's pink Ooh, it makes me look kind of a funny color doesn't it I don't mind so this is my tank top and I love it. I love this color. It's great for over a tank top, like an underneath tank top, like camisole, or over a bathing suit. I was over at Hobby Lobby in the clearance that I did the haul from. If you want to see, go see my haul video. I'll link it down below. And I've wanted to try Omega's Symphonia for years. Ever since I started going to Hobby Lobby, they've had Symphonia. And I've always picked it up and I'm like, oh, it has such a nice body. It's beautiful. But I have a hard time when I'm not familiar with a yarn investing in it and most projects that I would make with this would take quite a little bit and I wasn't sure how long how far the yarn would carry itself because it's mercerized and it has a good amount of body in it so I took advantage fortunately I saw it it was on the clearance for $1.50 instead of the regular six dollars and I just went for it I got four balls in the Roja Mexicano, is it? Yeah, Rosa Mexican, Mexicano. So Mexican pink. <laughs> and I just love it. It's so cool. I did this whole tank top in two balls. So I still have two balls left over, which is so cool. It's living in, or it lived in for its short duration of being created. I think I made this in about two days. I think it took three because I stopped making the lace for a little bit and worked on something else. 
but about two days worth of actual crochet. And it's in my bag that I made last year for my Hobby Lobby fabric. It's vintage Cantam trailers and Volkswagen buses, which are right my speed. I love this. It was made up on a D hook, really small hook considering this is sport weight cotton, but it was nice because it made it very, I'll say modest. And I also like the pattern, which was modified by Irma Veronica Flores Flores, a channel on YouTube. She modified a tank top that was made completely of the lace down below. She used sport weight cotton also, but it was not mercerized. But she noted that somebody with a larger bust would need more support and would be more attractive in something that actually had some structure. I'm so glad she did. And she just had, I do love Irma Veronica Flores Flores. <laughs> Um, I don't speak Spanish. I have a good, strong Spanglish game because of where I came up. I grew up in Southern California and I took about four years of French. So between those two things, I get by on a YouTube video pretty easily, especially if they're good with their camera and it's placed well. So she added the bodice, which is where you start. You kind of do one cup and then the other. The nice thing about it is this is folded in half. These do not go down to the front of your chest. The front of your chest would be right about here, which is nice. I don't like it when these things, these darts, go straight out to the front. It just looks a little, that's a good word. Look at me, you know? <laughs> um, so it's a little bit more modest just for the fact that these darts kind of go out to the side and disappear into your armpit a little bit. And this cup actually goes all the way under your armpit toward your back and then after making the two cups you connect them with a nice strap right here which adds even more support than you would expect so you work back and forth then you sew together over here then you pick up on the front and do the straps and it's a really cool strap construction because it made it very strong she had everybody connect their strap in the fourth scallop after making the scallops I went ahead and just attached with a stitch marker because I was worried that I would want to have the straps connected at a different place on the strap after the yarn was done because my yarn was going to be a little denser than hers and that might have dragged on the strap a little bit and been lower than I wanted. But no, it worked out just fine where she said. Then I picked up with the lace. After making the strap underneath the bodice and connecting the straps, you pick up on the lace. And I didn't do any increasing. You're supposed to do increases at four places from almost the very beginning. But I just felt like going straight down. And I'm glad I did because it would have been flared out quite a bit. Because even just straight down, it felt like it flared out quite a bit. Did several repeats of the lace. I expect that to relax quite a bit after a few washings, even if it is by hand. I love mercerized cotton. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the process of mercerizing. Um, basically, you take the cotton before it's spun into yarn and you put it under tension and you dip it into a caustic acid, usually something kind of like lye. You bring it out, you rinse it in an acidic rinse off and you bring it out and then you spin it into yarn and you usually singe it because just the process that I had described already will make it shiny just because the outer surface is going to be more reflective. But then when you singe off any fluff on top of that, it makes it super reflective. And it's not, it's definitely shinier. I mean, it's shinier than your dish, your dishcloth cotton, your lily sugar and cream all by itself. And then they singe off the edges and it's even nicer. And in addition to just making it shinier, it makes it just a more high quality fiber. It will be stronger, it will last longer, it'll be more resistant to all sorts of issues that you run into with cotton. And it's just a little bit nicer to work with, I feel. So if I get the opportunity, I do lean toward mercerized cotton, except for dishcloths. I like those to be absorbent. Oh, and in addition to that, it makes it soak up a lot more dye and the dye stays inside the fiber a lot better, so less bleeding and brighter colors. I like this. These are all good things to me. I do, sometimes you look into it and it is a little bit more of a chemical issue, a bit more of a carbon footprint, 
for the chemicals that they use to do this. But aside from that, it does make for a much nicer fiber. So look at that and that color. Oh, and I will say now that I've tried this, I will be eager to spend the $6 on a ball of this yarn. It went so far and so far it was really nice to work with. The project worked up great. It was a pleasure and they have some beautiful colors that I resisted buying so many times because I didn't know if I would get much actual fabric area out of it. <laughs> and now I know I would and I'm eager. I'm thinking of all the things I could make in sport weight cotton. So sport weight cotton time. What's next? Hats. Okay. These are my hats. My husband, before all the work stuff happened, he went to Indianapolis for some training and he was teased because it was the beginning of winter and it was super cold by our standards. Probably not the people in Indianapolis's standards, but he, one sec. So his trainer was teasing him and saying, are you ever going to take that off? And he's like, you have no idea how nice it feels. And he's like, well, of course not. She didn't make me a hat. And he's like, but she would. Cause anybody that knows me knows you make half a comment about my hats in a positive direction. I'm going to make you something right. I'm sure you're all like that too. <laughs> but as far as hats, I mean, they take me no time at all. I have a ton of acrylic at home, which is usually what I use for gifting. I'm not going to make somebody something that is going to be a bear on them if they don't know how to hand wash or whatever. And he promised him one and he's like, what color do you want? And he said, I'll wear whatever color. So my husband opted. He's like, you want pink? And he's like, I'll wear a pink hat from your wife. So here is my hot pink hat. It's neon fuchsia. I love this yarn. So it's hundred percent acrylic Aaron weight. I used an eye hook. It's just my basic half double crochet hat. I will share the pattern if you guys like. I kind of mellowed it out for him. His name's Big Bob. My husband asked for a big hat for him. And this way he can cuff it over if it's too big. But if it's not big enough, these stretch like crazy and I made it extra deep. And I smoothed it out with some black at the bottom just to, you know, masculine it up. So that's for Big Bob. And then Big Bob has a partner who likes John Deere. He's more of a medium size like my husband's hat would be. So I made this for him and this is, I love this yarn in grass green and bright yellow. So that's my hats that I made and I'm really happy I finished them. They've been on my to-do list forever. This was a big week for just making a list and checking things off of it. And if anything did not make that list, it just needs to leave for a few months. I'm not going to go around frogging just yet, but there were some things that were sitting there really deterring me from actually doing anything at all and that had to stop now next is some little bit of amigurumi now I don't know if you guys know this but I love to make an ami so when given the opportunity my son's friend got a new desk and he needed a little Pikachu for it so we went ahead and found a pattern excuse my crinkling for Pikachu 93 stitches has Oh, 93stitches.com. She has the cutest Pokemon patterns. They're free. They're adorable. They're wonderful. And oh my gosh, so cute. Then my son saw him. His ear doesn't normally do that. There we go. <laughs> my son saw him. He's like, can I have a Squirtle? So I didn't quite love her Squirtle because she uses light blue and colors that I didn't agree with, but I used some of her pattern for it. I basically made Squirtle just like po just like Pikachu. And then I used her pattern for his tail and his shell because Squirtle is a squirrel turtle. And I liked the mint a lot better because this is my grand Squirtle. Come here, grand Squirtle. So my son's Squirtle from Build-A-Bear and I just thought the color was perfect. So this is Minty by Red Heart Super Saver and but Squirtle should not be chartreuse on his belly. He should definitely be a little bit more of a light yellow color in my opinion just based on history. So I went with that and this is Lemon Yellow. This is also Red Heart Super Saver in bright yellow, black and his details back here which are usually brown I went with coffee color in Red Heart Super Saver 
I will probably end up tagging his, I tag down his ear. I just like that look better. And I'll probably tag down his tail too because it keeps wanting to go straight behind him. And I know if he's sitting on a desk, they're gonna wanna see the tail when they're looking at the front of them. So that'll be all set up. I use safety eyes and felt for his cheeks and embroidery thread for his mouth. I keep a little basket because I do a lot of little dolls here. I usually prefer cotton for my amigurumi, but the colors, I wasn't gonna get Pikachu yellow in cotton. I looked all around. If I find any ever, I will totally go for it. I like the worsted weight. It works up fast. These were on a D hook. Usually I like cotton. Like this is my Jigglypuff. This is, I love this cotton yarn, which is an Aran weight cotton. Felt on the eyes. I fabric glue them down and I keep all of this together. I have a bag for my fleece. I only needed red, so I just grabbed a red while I was at the store, so I didn't have to dig into the bag. I don't know what it is. I keep a great stash, but when I'm at the store, I think to myself, are you going to pick this up for 20 cents, or are you going to go home and find out it's the one color you don't have? <laughs> and you know that's going to happen, so I always pick up just like a, a piece if I know I'm going to need just a color. And then in my bag... First off, I keep my jar of eyeballs. So these are all my safety safety eyes. I have kitty eyes, kitty noses, all sorts of colors of eyes in here, all sorts of sizes, the flat eyes, the round eyes, you name it. Then in addition to that, I have my bag of fluff. And in my bag of fluff, I keep my mung beans. I like filling a little bag, like a little Ziploc bag um, snack size. I fill it with just a handful, just a palmful of mung beans. And then I twist the top of it and then I wrap it up in a rubber band so water doesn't get in there, even if it goes in the machine. And then I sit it in his tush. First I put some of the fluff down so you can't see through it. Just a tiny bit so it's not see-through. Then I put the little bag in there. Can you see them? Where is it? They all have it. But So there's fluff there first. Then inside there is a little bag of mung beans. You can kind of hear it a little, but it makes them sit so nicely. <laughs> and then everything else is just fluff polyfill. I also keep in here my embroidery thread, as well as my fabric glue. And I do like liquid stitch and it's a little pricey. I think this is $7. I wish it was less, but this will last me forever unless I accidentally leave the lid slightly open and it dries up, which is so frustrating. This is actually a new one for that very same reason, but I did get a lot of use out of that. So it's okay. I have done other ones in acrylic. I think this is my first one. This is my turkey. And I think, oh, I know, I made this when my son, my almost nine-year-old, was about two months old. So I have pictures of him with this. This has been through the wash and the dry so many times. It's Red Heart Super Saver. I think this is mocha and chocolate. And then, <laughs> so funny. Those are safety eyes because he was a baby when he got it. So I wasn't going to button so on buttons. I didn't know much about safety eyes, but I found them for this project. And there's a little felt behind there. So he looks a little cross-eyed and his tail. And it's pretty floppy because of the acrylic and the machine washing over and over again. I'm a germaphobe. I'm a germaphobe. I would rather give my baby an ugly turkey. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'd rather give him an ugly turkey than a dirty turkey. And you know how they are. They drop everything on the floor before you know what they're throwing everything on the floor on purpose. But that's just a little history of my Omega Rumi. And these are the latest additions. I'll be giving these out this week. So you now I have a little memory with you guys so I can remember. I might need some more though. I might need some for me. I kind of love it. I finished my blanket. Okay. Where'd he go? Oh my gosh, panic. Here he is. Ah, Cherry Heart. So Sandra over at Cherry Heart is having it along. And you're supposed to finish. So she has one finished thread for purchased 
patterns and one finished thread for free patterns. This would be for the free pattern because this is based on her happy scrappy blanket and I started this a couple years ago. This has been my scrap blanket for a couple of years and I've enjoyed the making so much but she's having me along it's going to end and I wanted something to put in there so I let it end I mean it's one of those things you could continue on as long as you want but this is a good size throw and it's done okay pretty awesome I'm pretty excited um, as you can tell I'm gonna miss it. I am not weaving in the back. They are, I always crochet over my tails, so you'll find they're in the middle and they are secure, but I'm not ready yet emotionally to cut any of these threads. So I will probably fiddle with it, maybe for years. I don't mind it. I consider it kind of fringe, right? It looks almost like fringe. <laughs> but it's all from projects that I made, yarns that I dyed, and from things that were gifted to me from friends. So it's really, really special and just so squishy. I used a D hook and I did nine rows high and 18 stitches across throughout the entire blanket. All sock weight. It's so fun. I did have a bit of a pattern. I, I can do random color but I can't do a completely random pattern. If you look at it, it goes diagonally dark, medium, light. And then down here, dark, dark, dark medium, 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 light, 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 throughout the entire blanket. So it changes color families and this, that, and the other, and you won't find many colors that are repeating around the same area. That was the random colors and the dark, medium, light was enough to keep me calm. A completely random, uh, I never would have loved it. <laughs> but I love this. I'm so excited. And I went ahead and put it in the finished thread. As far as my bot pattern, I don't know. I'm trying to want to make something, but I'm just not feeling it. And I'm really wanting to make a purse, but I do have another conundrum in that I still have a whole lot of minis. Um, they're all gifted to me or from my projects. Here's my wound up ones. a couple practically full balls on the top here and I have a basket full of more minis and then on top of here I have a box whoops that's so cute don't go away full of even more minis and this is through years of swapping. Like I said, I started this about two years ago. I've been swapping with people. My blanket only took three ground balls. So three ground balls are everybody has when they're so happy to send them out to somebody because usually somebody's like, I want a 10 ground ball. I want a six ground ball, maybe seven, maybe five, but three, that's like nothing. Everybody has a bunch of three grams, right? So I was spoiled rotten by friends over and over and I'm so blessed by it and I still like them. Just saying, I still want them. But <laughs> check that one out. This is from Daisy Knits. We had a swap a while ago and I love this color. It's called Bunny Barf. So cute. Oh, that's so pretty. It has all the pretty colors. So I have a, a shawl that I started a while ago and I'm really upset because I found this had my needle broke. I've had this set of needles forever. This is my Knitter's Pride Majestics. They look like this. And it was my interchangeable set. I've replaced most of the most of these with Nova Platinas, but I still use the cords and everything because they're interchangeable with those two. But look at that. Isn't that cool? So this was this started out as my advent calendar project. And it has been for two Christmases now. And I figured it would be another, but now that I'm done with the blanket, I'm kind of itching to do more on it. In between each color, I use as much as I can get as far as the stripes, and that'll be less and less. Like this one, this purple, I was only able to get one color stripe out of that, which is fine. I love that color. I'm just happy to have it forever in a shawl. And in between each color stripe, I'm using Hawthorne by Knit Picks in just the bare yarn. 
it's very it's got a lot of body and a nice twist and a nice loft to it so even if it's going between really thin yarns it's still going to be a nice dense material at the end <coughs> so that is i'm very excited i found myself drawn to that shawl more and more and i'm using the i have the pattern here dream stripes The Dream Stripes pattern it has a little bit of lace at the bottom, if you can see that at all. I had to make notes. Note that I am a much, I'm a very comfortable crocheter, but knitting, I still consider myself kind of an intermediate, although I have no problem taking on any pattern whatsoever. I'm fine with being bad at something, if that makes any sense. There is not a perfectionist in me, so I'm just happy. I'm a project knitter. I like the outcome, but I live in Texas. Somebody mentioned the other day, what do you do with all these shawls in a warm climate? And I'm like, I put it in a tote. What do you mean? <laughs> um, I just love making. So if I have something in mind, that's cool. I am reopening the Etsy shop. A lot of people were very happy to hear that and I'm happy to make them happy. Um, I have been deep making lately and I feel confident that I will enjoy the making. So as long as I make most things beforehand and not custom, I think it's going to keep on being just as fun. But I make little notes for myself. Like this one is how to do a make one left and how to do a make one right because I didn't want to Google that every single row. <laughs> And that pattern came from Cannell Blog, which is C-A-N-A-L-B-L-O-G. And I'll try and put a link to that below. But if you have any questions, I always do Ravelry project pages and you are welcome to come take a peek. I found them. Okay. My socks are in the makes. Um, I was keeping them in my little stitch holder, but I'm on the toe, so it wasn't working as well there. And inside here, I'm keeping all of my stitch, my... DPNs in my size one because I'm going back and forth between metal. I like the brushed nickel and bamboo. I'm using my chow goo size ones and I'm not sure where I got the brushed nickel ones. Probably just Joann's or something, but I really like the metal when I'm doing decreases. I don't worry about snapping them because I have snapped my chow goo size ones before and it kind of broke my heart. In my beautiful bag from Hannah at Cozy Cottage with the beautiful glitter fabric inside, I have been housing my socks. I went over and got my first Hedgehog Fibers in Twist sock as opposed to the regular sock that I got. And I'm loving it. It's so dense and beautiful. I got it to celebrate my son's 21st birthday. It's a bit of a souvenir yarn. And I got right to work on some socks. <clears throat> I'm doing some Rose City Rollers. One, two, three... Four. Yep, I have a good number. Sometimes I get an extra needle just in there and I'm on the toe. So I started them about three days ago, four days ago, and I'm already this far. That's pretty good for me. I usually take a while, um, usually because I'm distracted with other projects, but I just plowed through my crochet. So the only other thing I really have going on is my shawl. I think I want to start a purse though. So I'm losing my voice here. That's not like me. I have the little, I have this, it's my little neck, <clears throat> and it was a potluck color, so that means it doesn't have a name, it's just something they made a few of, and I love the chartreuse with the pops of hot pink, and the darker pink, and the darker greens in there, and it's netting up so cute. I love how it's all pink on the bottom and the greens are all on the top, and now I'm going to finish the toe tonight, I'm right on schedule. I've showed you guys how I do it in my happy planner before. I just make up goals. So this sock was basically, basically let's look at the future. Um, tomorrow I have start my sock number two and work through the heel, which will be to about there because heel for me includes the shrinking. And then I'll do the foot. I start, when I say foot, I know for myself, I mean do the decreases and work the gusset and work through the foot. And then I'll give myself probably two days to work through the foot. 
and then I'll give myself a day to do the toe. And since toes are so little, that usually makes up for anything that I'm behind and I could still end on a good note. I know it usually takes me a lot longer to make the socks, but it's not really knitting time. Either they live in my car and they only get maybe a row every four days. <laughs> and in that case, of course, it takes me a year. But as a rule, it's just because I don't knit on them. I'll only schedule a day or two a month to work on them. And if they aren't the most interesting thing I have going on, of course it's going to be kind of, you know, slow and pokey. But I'm loving these. And they kind of lit a fire under me saying the first person who finishes might get a prize. I don't feel confident that I will win. We have some amazing, fast, wonderful sock knitters at my local sock, uh, my local yarn store, McKinney Knittery. But I can try, right? And I don't even know if my shorty socks will count. I would make longer socks. They don't take that much longer. But I don't wear long socks. Do you guys? I might be, again, my climate. But I will wear the heck out of these. I love shorty socks. And I love the way these Rose City Rollers stay on. It's my third pair. And I'm working on a pair for my son's girlfriend, too, Amber. So, loving it. Oh, my gosh. That yarn. And it smells so good. After this, I'm going to start a pair of rye for my little guy. That is a worsted weight sock from Tin Can Knits. This is the one I made him about, it was, oh, it was right after I first started knitting. So probably about three years ago. He's about to turn nine. I, you can imagine his foot is bigger now. Although these had a good amount of stretch. Although it was made before I knew how to purl. Purl? No. Yo. Yarn over the correct direction, so my stitches are all twisted. <laughs> I don't mind though, it's kind of like baby knitting. So it's his baby sock and it's my baby knitting. Um, all the way through, they're so twisted. It almost reminds me of Tunisian crochet, but he loved these socks. He wore them to pieces. The yarn held up really well. So while I was at the clearance, I got the clearance at Hobby Lobby. This is I Love That Wool, the blend. So it's 80% acrylic and 20% wool. And he loves the mustard color and I got two balls. So I can definitely make him a pair that fit him now. He was really excited when he heard. He made a big ah face. He was very excited. So that'll be started up as soon as I finish this pair of socks. And they go so fast because they're worsted weight. And that is it for me guys. This is going to be a very fun and busy week. I'm very happy that I got to sit down and say hello to you guys. Now, a little bit of admin for the podcast and the Revelry group. I have some gifts that are going out this week. Thank you to so much to the people that were patient with me. It was a very, very crazy last couple of months. <laughs> um, so I have some back mailing to do, and that's all going out this week. Thank goodness. And in addition to that, I do want to do a little giveaway just for this one, in case you're looking. I have two more balls of Symphonia, and it's so pretty, it, it can't just sit on the shelf. So if you would like to win two balls of Symphonia by Omega, let me know down below what you would make with it. Next time, I will pull a random number from the comments that have to do with Symphonia, and we'll go ahead and give this away. Since I'm going to be mailing out anyway, I'll let you guys know. It's just for about a week. I'll be back next week. So down below in the comments, let me know what you would make with 400 meters of sport weight mercerized cotton in this beautiful summer weather. Is there more? There's more, right? Ooh, ooh, ooh. We had the As Seen on TV Cal, and I'm gonna be giving away those prizes when I'm giving away the cotton. So that'll be very cool. I'm so excited. We had so many really, really cool projects being made up. The finished object thread was over on the Quirky Monday podcast with Kalisha. Hi, girl. I had so much fun. The chatter thread was just amazing. People made the cutest things. And I do have a question for you guys. Do you all like Amigurumi? Do any of you make little dolls and presents for friends, knitted or crocheted? I know Amigurumi is usually crocheted, but you guys that make, is it Moki? Moki Moki? What do we call it when it's knitted? Ooh, I'm blanking completely, but they're all so cute. I love making little dolls and they work up so fast and they use just barely scrap yarn. 
So that's it for me. I have a couple of reviews that I'm going to be making up this week and I have a little tutorial that I'm going to be showing so you will be hearing a lot more from me. If you would like to please subscribe down below and click the notification bell so we can keep in touch. Leave comments, let me know what you're suggesting. I cannot wait to hear from you and I hope you have a great week. Bye guys!